All right, so I after my long sappy goodbye, I ended up with uh, deciding to mess with things and get our game working a little bit better here. So we got a couple issues already kind of going on, right? Uh, one thing is our our UI is not independent of our screen resolution. So as you can see here, it kind of moves dependent on what our resolution is, and that's due to anchoring. So let's start off with that. So right here you see if you click on the UI and you go over to the uh, text that we have on here if you push this top left instead it will actually be anchored based off of that so it'll and it'll always stay the same distance right now it's trying to stay the same distance from where the anchor was before which is the center right and you would do the same thing to the number as well so if you click here on the top left you move this over as well and you'll end up with something when you play that is always staying the same distance from the top left corner of the screen overlay instead of how we were doing it before. So if I click this, it moves. If I click this, it moves. See what I'm saying? It's a lot, a lot cleaner, and it's, it works a lot better. Now there's a second thing that I definitely wanted to fix inside of this to make it uh, more of a complete tutorial series, and that is this little function right here. Okay, it didn't work that time. There we go, this little function right here where you can just keep on going over and, and it doesn't really matter anymore, you know? So that has to actually be fixed within scripting. So if we go over here, we go to, and actually I'm gonna show you something a little bit more clever. I wasn't gonna do it this way originally, but let's do it this way. So we're gonna go over to where the level is at. Right now we have it so that if you fall, this game object right here, we'll call this actual fall, that ends the game, right? So let's actually add something else to this. It doesn't even have to be the same shape or anything like that. So let's make it so it's a new empty object. Let's take a look at where it's at. It can be somewhere right around here. It doesn't really matter as long as the Z is set on zero. We'll make it so that it has a box collider on it. And you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Now this is a lot more work. I guess we're gonna have to do it so it's separate for each one. So build it in right here for instance and we'll we'll build the shape out so that it goes out and it basically keeps it so that when you're hitting this you're not able to just fall upon it right so this is for instance we add a component a script to it new script we're gonna call it this gravity gravity helper maybe Something like that, it doesn't really matter. We'll call it Gravity Helper. We're gonna go over to Visual Studio. Q fast forward. All right, after it finally loads, after a million years, we can actually open the actual script that I wanted to use in the first place, hopefully. There we go, Gravity Helper is now in there. Now, as a challenge, maybe even my final challenge to you, I would like for you to set it up so that it is, uh, when it's getting triggered, it finds out if it is colliding with the player. All right, so, boy on collision enter 2D. Actually, this be on trigger enter 2D, we're gonna make it. and we will change this to a trigger before we forget. And then we're gonna say, if collision dot game object dot tag equals equals player, then we are going to do something. Now, you're gonna wanna go collision dot game object dot get component and you want to get player controller like that All right this will get you the player controller from the player of course and you want to say enabled equals false now this right here is pretty handy it does the equivalent of unchecking whatever box you get so when it triggering on the player if I can click on it there it goes 
when triggering on the player, it'll see this box right here on the player controller because it gets the player controller uh, script, the component right here, and then it'll uncheck this box. That's what it does. So that script should do it now. And if I go ahead and play it, I run over here. I'm fine if I'm over here, right? And it, uh, it's this one right here. So I'm fine if I'm just jumping around. I'm good. But you see how right there? I used to be able to do this on that. But if I go backwards here and I try to do it on the left side, boom, player controller doesn't work anymore. So it just flips me right down the world right there. And all of a sudden I just slip. I no longer can do that function that we had before because it's no longer taking an input and messing with the velocity. So all you have to do to do this, and it's not a very elegant solution, but it is a solution, is take this object right here. We'll call it gravity helper. We're going to copy it, paste it. We're going to move it like so. Add it to collider. You basically just want to make it fit in with whatever you want. Now, there's probably better solutions than this out there. I'm sure somebody's come up with something a lot better. Me, this is the best thing I can come up with on, uh, uh, I shouldn't call it short nose, but just thinking about it <laughs> by myself. Um, let me think. So, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this so that you can see it really fast. All right, that should about do it. Now there are other possible solutions out there, but uh, I just the reason why I didn't go with any of them, like uh, the ones I thought of was like actually just to build it right into the tile set, actually check through the script if uh, you're touching a certain layer, make a layer that's like for like the player not being able just to overcome the grid like that. But I just didn't like it. Uh, another problem is that that last screen right there where it says welcome home, it's not scaling to the full size of the screen. We definitely want to scale to the full size of the screen. We'll work on that. And the other problem is, of course, the flickering that's been going on. Now, to fix the flickering, we go into our level. It pulls up the grid, right? And on here, we're going to say 0 0.99 and 0.99. So. All I did there, and as you saw, I went through the game and didn't have any flickering left on there. You might need to mess with that number if it's still happening on your screen, like make it 0.98 or something like that. But what this does is it changes the size of these uh, the squares on the grid. So right now, this, the size of the squares was one full unit per square. And when I change it to be 0.99, that means it took up 0.99 instead of it. And the pictures, though, the, the tiles themselves are still the full size. They're still the 100% full size of the grid squares. So and Unity, what's happening is when they're the exact same size, sometimes when the ratio of the screen gets messed up or it just doesn't align right, they're pulling one pixel outside of the, uh, the grid and the spots onto the transparency behind it inside of... I'm gonna show you inside of the sunny land. So like I showed you this once before where on the sprites and stuff, like uh, not on the that, but on the environment sprites and stuff, on the slice tile set that they, they have transparency all around every square like here. Now, so what's happening is that uh, when it has to pull outside of the tile, when Unity is like, okay, I don't have enough tile here, not enough picture, I need to pull a little bit outside of it to make this work. It's uh, it's actually pulling the transparency, and that's why you can see through it to the colors behind it. So what I did is I shrank down the grid so that it's 0.99, so that even if it's pulling outside of there, it's actually just showing up a pixel short, and it, so the flickering should hardly ever happen, if ever happen now. It'll probably still happen occasionally, but this will fix it 99% of the time. So as you see, it's, it hasn't happened since I did the change on here. Right. Oh, and that's a, another thing I wanted to fix is also that frog right there. So when the frog is uh, the frog still moving when he's in the air because he's because uh, gravity's still affecting him. So in order to take care of that, we can uh, and when he's uh, going through the death on there, let's see. Actually, we can. Do, I think we're doing it through enemy right now. Set trigger. Yeah. All right. In order to fix this, you just want to go rb dot. It's rb dot. I think it's body type. There it is. Body type. 
equals rigid body type 2D dot static. The type of thing that doesn't move, basically. Or you can actually make it uh, kinematic. That works as well, too. It doesn't really make a difference. Either one does work. Uh, basically, he'll stop moving at that point. Also, but because of that, and because the player can still run into him, you also want to go uh, get component. You want to get your collider 2D, right? And you want to say dot enabled equals false, so that you can no longer collide with anything as well. Right? So if we play this now, we run through here, we see the frog, we wait till he's about to jump. Oh, and you see he just stops now when he explodes. Also, that uh, getting rid of that uh, collider 2D uh, makes it so that you can't double jump on the eagle's heads anymore, too. Okay? So that about sums up uh, the problems that we had with the enemies before. Let's save the scene. And let's also go to our other scene to finish this whole thing off. Let's go to the end. Now, on the end, we have our welcome home canvas. This is supposed to be going over the span of the whole screen. Actually, let's do a uh, scale with screen instead. And let's correctly anchor it as well. So. This right here, for instance, we'll do like that. This right here, we'll do, why is this showing up like that? And this right here, we'll do like, oh, I meant to do this. Okay, that's what the problem is. And then this right here, we can do like this as well. So if you click these top left corners, not this, because that only does one or the other. You want uh, all of it to be anchored like this. And then it, where you move it will always be dependent on the corner of the screen. Now this right here, just do that, like that, and you want to have it tied to the screen type right here, right? Go like this, there you go, more of a welcome home that he deserves, right? And. We're going to go ahead and tie this anchor up right there. That's another way to do it, by the way. This thing right here is the anchor. So you can have it. And I actually want him anchored into the bottom right corner along with the house. All right. So that's not all anchored in. This is still anchored to the center. And we'll scale with this. And this whole thing will now scale with the screen. So it should never be the different size anymore. So if we hit play, it should now work. Welcome home. See, now it works out right. So we'll save the scene right here. Go back to the sample scene. I hit the play button one last time. And say goodbye to you guys. This is it for the encore. I don't see anything I didn't wrap up and that I didn't, you know, want fixed at this point. This is literally everything I want to change on here. Like. I did want to add some special effects, actually, like some like screen shaking stuff, but I don't know. That's gonna be next tutorial series. Hopefully, you guys join me for that because I really enjoyed making this, and I'm enjoying editing the videos and posting them. I'm actually on I think uh, video six now, uh, posting them. I'm posting one video a day, as I will do with the next series as well. I'm gonna get to work on making that actually. Please give me some feedback down below. Let me know what I can do better what you liked, what you disliked, everything, so that, you know, I, I really want to get better at this and, and to provide real value to everybody. Um, I think that about sums it up. Uh, please hit the like button. It'll, it'll help me get more people to see these videos. Like, um, you know, people, everybody's time is limited. Like, uh, so I would like to, nah, I don't even know how to put it, to just have like a better chance of being seen and stuff. Uh, please also subscribe, hit the bell notification to learn about my next series and everything. I probably decided, by the time you see this, I probably decided what I'm doing. I'm probably already making it and editing it. I'm probably already done with the next series, to be honest. So, have yourselves a great day. Thanks for spending all this time with me. Thank you. Bye.